Hey friend, Brandon here. I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro Max for a little while now, and uh, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to return it. It's just, it's not for me. But you're probably wondering why. So let's talk about it, because this is Tech Today. We'll start first with the camera. The thing about the iPhone 12 Pro Max is that it's advertising itself almost like it's a professional camera that you can use to create all these movies and shows with. It's very inspiring and you really could actually do that. There are movies that have been shot on iPhones. For me personally, I'm not the type of person that would use my phone for making videos. Instead, I'll use a mirrorless camera like I'm using right now, like a Sony a7S III. So then that leaves me with the more casual use of the camera for videos and photos. So that means I don't need this huge, huge screen because I don't need a really huge, robust monitor for making my videos. I'm just filming when I'm out and about. And here's a really interesting thing. The difference between the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max in terms of the camera isn't really all that significant. Sure, there is a really awesome sensor shift going on here for image stabilization. That's something that you might find on something like a GH5 or even on the Sony a7S III. Really awesome stuff. But it's not something that I must have in my phone. I have my cameras for that. And yeah, the sensors are bigger, which help with low light video and photography, and it definitely helps with just a higher quality image. But once again, when I really want the highest quality image, I have my actual cameras for that. Like this camera that I'm using right now, the Sony a7S III is insane. It can see incredible things in the dark. So this is what the room looks like pretty much right now, but then you can bump this camera up all the way up into this ISO of 409,600 and it's almost like you can see in the middle of the dark. It's kind of wild. It does a better job than the human eye. <laughs> And that's just the camera itself. For the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it uses a lot of software to get there, and it's really awesome. But for the iPhone 12 Pro Max, not only do I not really need that difference, but the difference between the 12 Pro and the Pro Max is not actually all that noticeable. It's not drastic. So to upgrade to this purely for the cameras between the 12 Pro doesn't make a lot of sense. What does make sense is if you really do want to have a large screen, maybe this is the only device you have. You don't have a laptop or an iPad. That totally makes sense. Or maybe you want a bigger battery because honestly the battery life in the 12 series is just not that great. This one ends up being you know reasonable or normal but you keep hearing me talk about the 12 Pro Max and other iPhone 12 models and that's the big thing. When you look at alternatives like the iPhone 12 mini well you start realizing that this little guy does at least 80% of what this big guy does. It's definitely small but mighty and so when you compare things like the photo quality or video quality you start realizing that it's not really that different. Yeah this one does have a telephoto lens and lidar which is really awesome it helps those portrait shots look a lot better i have to admit that but my practical use i don't really use the telephoto as much as i use the wide angle camera which is on this one and portrait shots are still pretty darn good on this if it turns out poorly i just take another one and crazy enough the difference between the pro max and the mini is not drastic on the ultra wide and telephoto actually the telephoto is pretty decent with just a little extra sharpening on the mini so when this phone can do 80 percent of what this phone can do outside of the screen and battery of course, you have to start to wonder, is it worth the price difference? You see, this is $1,100, while this is $700. That $400 price difference is more than half of the cost of this phone. This is a really expensive phone, and when you have phones like this, you start wondering, why am I paying so much just to have the best of the best? It's kind of like the 80-20 rule. The 80% is the easy part. It pretty much covers the bulk of the things, the things that really matter, or are really easy to obtain or work towards. The last 20%, that's a lot more work and they have diminishing returns. And that 20% difference, you really start paying for it. A $400 premium at that. And actually this is all a compliment to Apple and what they have done. Like we're seeing in the M1 chips in the MacBook Air, which I have a video for up here, the MacBook Pro. Apple is really doing an incredible job with their chips. The fact that this phone has the same chip as this phone is really quite amazing. On top of that, Apple Silicon is so powerful now that there's so much headroom, at least on a phone. Essentially, we're not maxing out the processor in this little guy. It really flies. It's super smooth and can do a ton despite its size. Small but mighty. So in a weird way, my experience using this phone compared to this phone is 
largely the same, which is kind of incredible. But there is one big difference, size. You see, when I use this phone, it's a bit unwieldy. It's huge. And I know some of you will say, well, it's the same size as the 11 Pro Max from last year. So what were you expecting? Well, that's not entirely true. This is a little bit bigger. It's kind of comparable to a Note 20 Ultra or S20 Ultra. But the difference is those phones are taller and thinner. They're not as wide. So this being really wide is a little bit harder to hold. On top of that, as much as I love the flat sides and everything, it doesn't conform to your hand as much, so it feels even thicker. It just digs into your hand when it's so big. I don't know why they didn't include the chamfered edges that were on the older design, which so many people loved. That was like a great looking phone. And that's not to say that this doesn't look good. This is a great looking phone. I love the matte finish. The gold is really good looking, but you know, it's definitely fingerprinty and nasty and all that stuff. And when you compare the two, this does feel a little bit cheaper because of the back is just, you know, this smooth, glossy glass that kind of feels like plastic in a weird way. But like so many else, I do like the matte finish on the sides. This guy, when you put it into your pocket, it still sticks out. And then when you sit down, it just jabs into your hip. It stinks. But the 12 mini, you put it into your pocket, you really don't notice it and it disappears. Also, for those who are not men, this fits into a woman's pocket, which is an important thing as well. So for me, I'm going to get rid of the 12 Pro Max and I'm going to stick with the 12 mini. I don't really need this for the screen. I I have an iPad for that. I have a laptop PC for gaming and I have a Mac. So now that I'm switching over to the 12 mini, I think it's about time to compare it with the Pixel 5. I know a number of you have asked for it. So I'm gonna start thinking about this and get used to this one before I compare the two. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when I post a video on it. Of course, I wanna know what you want me to compare between these two phones. So leave a comment down below and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. Now, of course, switching from the 12 Pro Max to the mini just fits my personal preference. And that might be different from you. So that's totally okay. But I'd love to know the things that you value in a phone or why you would go with each model. So leave some comments for that as well. For me, I just want solid phone calls, the ability to communicate with family and friends over iMessage, which is honestly really great. AirDrop is super convenient for making the YouTube videos that I post here. And of course, I'll casually watch a YouTube video or something on Twitch, which I have a channel for. You can totally check that out. But I don't really need a bigger screen. If I want a bigger screen, I have an iPad or a laptop for. Otherwise, I just want a phone that just works and disappears and doesn't demand my attention. That's why it's been kind of refreshing refreshing having these smaller phones lately. I think smaller phones are back in. Do you think they're back in? Let me know. Anyways, those are my thoughts. If you want to pick up any of the iPhones or anything else, there are some links down below in the description. They are affiliate links and they do help support the channel. Thank you so much for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.